I'm so glad you could join me tonight, this morning, this evening, another beautiful day in God's glory, and let us all shine like a light upon the hill for the world to see, and let us love one another as he loved us. I'm going to read chapter 24 in the book of Matthew out of the New Testament of the King James Holy Bible. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one left here, one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said, he said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Divers means various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, the great falling away. Don't let yourself be taken away from God or be deceived and, 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 turn, and turn away from him. For no matter what happens, he has foretold us that troubles will come and we will be persecuted like he was persecuted. And we may die as he died, but we shall live forever as he lives forever. So keep that in mind. This world, we're passing through it. We aren't of this world. We're in this world. But our world is with our Heavenly Father. That's where our kingdom is. That's where our home is. But he, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations, and then shall the end come. And when ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Let then, then let them which is in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to his, his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. He's telling you, he's telling us, pray. Pray that our flight be not in the winter or on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, 
there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And who are the elect? God's chosen. The chosen sons and daughters. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. And people, we've seen this all of our lives. In the spring, the trees start budding out, right? when the green leaves are about to spring forth. So, likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. So what he's saying here, the parable of the fig tree, is like when you see the buds on the trees in the spring, you know that summer's close by. Well, when you start seeing the famines and the pestilences and the earthquakes in various places and the wars and rumors of wars, then you'll know he's not far away. He will be back. He said he would be back. He goes to prepare a place for us. If it were not so, he would have told us it was not so. But there are many mansions in his father's house, our father's house. So he goes to prepare a place for us. And he will come again and take us with him. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, you're being warned as Noah tried to warn. But no one would listen. No one would listen until it was too late. Don't wait. Don't let it be too late for you. Prep for eternity, for this world will end, and all the things that are in it. 
and we shall take none of it with us. It will be worthless. What is precious is our soul. And we should not fear the one who can kill our body. But fear the one who can kill your body and your soul. As in sending it to hell fire to burn up forever. So, don't wait. Get on your knees. Listen, people. There is nothing you have done that God doesn't already know you did. It's a matter of humbling yourself, surrendering your life to Him. Just as in the days of the lords and the kings and the knights, and they swore their honor and pledged their lives to the king. Well, Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, pledge yourself to Him. Ask Him to forgive you of things that you have done. Whether you know they were a sin or not, just ask for forgiveness of your sins, both known and unknown. Ask Him to come into your life. Ask him to open the door to eternity for you. And then follow his commandments and read your Bible and study to prove yourself, uh, to, to show yourself approved. You know, that you're reading his word. These are his words written on paper for you to read and understand. No, a lot of people say, I read my Bible, and I tell you, I can't, I don't understand anything. You have to pray before you start reading and ask for wisdom and understanding. And the words and their meaning will jump off the pages, and, and, and you'll understand. And then the more you read and the more you study, the more that it comes together, the better the picture is, the clearer everything becomes. His love is amazing. And his ways are here, written on these pages. In the Old Testament are all of the history of God and his children, how he loved them, how he treated them good, how he prospered them, how they turned away from him and worshiped false idols, things that are not alive and living like him, rocks and wood and stone and things made out of gold or, or silver or carved in a stone or carved on wood. These things are not alive, and, but yet the people would turn away and they would worship these things. And then God would get mad. He's like a jealous lover. He's like, how dare you? I'm going to punish you for doing that. And, and he does. It's just like a father correcting their children that they love their children. And they're not going to let their children do wrong. They're going to correct them and bring them back into the fold to live righteous lives. So that they can prosper and be happy and be loved. So then the people would fall away, worshiping false idols, and then God would punish them. And then they would, they would eventually come back and say, Oh Lord, what have we done? Please forgive us. Take this burden away from us. Please turn back to us. Please help us. And then he would. Just like in the great exodus. All the miracles that he did to extract the people from, from Egypt. Do you think that for one minute he couldn't have just taken those people away from there? But he did the ten plagues. And, and the locusts and the flies and the frogs and all of that 
to show how powerful he is. That there is none other like him. So if you haven't read these stories, you really have to read them. They're absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm just in love with God's word. It's so powerful and it means so much to me. And I, I just hope and pray that, that you can feel the same way and, and, and be inspired to go and give yourself to God and, and, and through his son. If you haven't done that already, please, you know, try, try to forgive yourself enough and love yourself enough to turn to heavenly father through his son, Christ Jesus and and Christ's name Jesus is really Yeshua in the Hebrew because he was a Hebrew child and he has a Hebrew name and the name is Yeshua so a lot of people say Jesus in Jesus name but it's it's Yeshua you can say in Yeshua's name and God's name is Yahweh it's amazing I mean when I first started reading my Bible and, and listening to the Word of God and understanding what a precious gift I have from Him and that He did it for me, I was so humbled and, and, and I was saved. I asked Him to forgive me of my sins. Now, the wonderful thing about you know, this world, the gift that he gave us was the gift of salvation, which is forgiveness of our sins, because sin is death. Death equals sin. And when he rose from the grave on the third day, he defeated death. He defeated sin. So we can go to, through him, to Heavenly Father and seek forgiveness of our sins. And he knows we're not perfect. Oh my goodness. If we were perfect, we wouldn't have needed him to die on the cross for us. We could have just, you know, been perfect. He knows we're not perfect. He knows we're not even capable of being perfect. And if you think about it, you know, he's right. So, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of, son of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. In other words, if we knew when Christ was coming back, we'd be ready and waiting well, you got to be watching and ready and waiting for when he comes. Just like you don't know, like this man, if he knew when the thief was coming, he'd have been watching for him. But that's the thing. We don't know the hour or the day when he's coming. So you got to watch and be ready. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye know not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Wisdom, whom his Lord 
hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due seasons. Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him doing so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in the day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's warned us. He's laid it out. He's given us warning signs. Like the fig tree, when the blooms are coming out, so you know summer's coming. So when you see these things that he is telling us that are going to happen before he comes, you know he's coming soon. But prepare yourself. And there's this beautiful Christian armor. And it's in the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to read this to you because it's really important. And the thing about it is no, I just have to find it when I was in Sunday school I learned the order of all the books but since I had West Nile virus I can't remember <laughs> the order and I keep trying to learn them again <laughs> But I never spent enough time to do it. But I can always find it by just looking. Just by going through the book. So, this is Ephesians 6, chapter 6. And here, this is written by the, the um, Apostle Paul. And Paul... Is, is encouraging people. Paul, oh, he's amazing. Anyway, he wrote so many letters warning the children to, you know, stay vigilant, to encourage one another, and to um, just be ready and watching. So, chapter 6 here. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, well with thee, and thou mayest love long, live long on the earth. I don't have my glasses and my eyes are getting tired. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and ad admonition of the Lord. Teach them to love God. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and the single mindness of your heart as unto Christ. For with eye service as men pleasers, not like that, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Serve God, not men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether it be he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, don't be threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. So God is the master of all, whether he's your boss, 
whether you're a worker, whether you're the boss, it doesn't matter because Christ is the master. God is the master in heaven. So master also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're president, whether you're the janitor, whether you're the manager at the local restaurant, whether you work at a factory, whether you're a manager or, or a supervisor and on a job, it doesn't matter. That is not important to God. What's important to him is what's in your heart and how you behave yourself. So, so he says he's not a respecter of persons. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the works, his fiery darts. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can you think of some people that maybe, you know, this applies to, that, you know, we're resisting? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, and ye may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about the tr with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. This is armor. Imagine, um, I guess if you could think of like a Roman soldier, how they're dressed, okay? They, they having your loins girt about with truth. They have that tie around their, their waist there. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the prepare, preparation of the gospel of peace, meaning walk in peace, above all, taking the shield of faith. So you have your shield. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the wicked one is Satan and his demons, which are the fallen angels. And... The children of the fallen angels. And take the helmet of salvation. This is your covering. Christ. Salvation. That's you. Christ covers you with salvation. So that's the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. This is the word of God, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that herein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. And he's talking to his beloved brother in Christ, faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things. This is what I was saying about praying for wisdom and understanding. He will make everything give you understanding. Whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren 
and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Hope you guys have a great night. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you can share it with your friends and family and those that are feeling down or discouraged or those that are lost and just have this big empty hole in their life that they may know and come to understand and receive the salvation that's available. Plant seeds and people prep for eternity. Love you.